Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori, and today we're gonna be doing the Fontaine Archon Quest. I am pretty late on this. I was supposed to do it last week, but I did take the week off due to personal reasons. So we're back the, the, the following week <laughs> doing it now. So uh, not gonna take up too much time. Very excited to do this. I've heard it's, it's very, very, very good. So without further ado, let's get into it. the first time we came here. Oh, Paimon remembers. Nahida's consciousness had been trapped by the doctor, but we followed the clues she left behind to help her. Oh, and in Lori our conquest um, fashion, I'm eating. I will be eating, so good memory. So much time has already passed since then, and it seems Sumeru's changing for the better now that Nahida's in charge, right? Paimon just hopes this peace will last a long time. And then Nahida won't have any more new problems to deal with. Yes, but as long as we're around. Yeah, I <clears> guess <throat> you're right. Hmm. We somehow always find ourselves right in the thick of it. Who knows what will happen next? Come to think of it, maybe it's all because of you. Maybe you're just a magnet for trouble. <laughs> Her face. I was just thinking that you might be the problem, Paimon. I like that we don't have a choice to say this. We just have to say it. Huh? Me? Before Paimon ran into you, Paimon never ran into any trouble. At most, when she was super tired, Paimon got caught in some I was going to say, weren't you drowning? And stepped out into sea. And even then, you fished Paimon out. Uh, anyway, for Nahida's sake, The girlies sake, are fighting. Maybe we should think about heading to our next destination for now. Next stop, Fontaine. Ah, look who it is. Running into <gasps> you in a place like this. Hello, I can Dia. see you two still love wandering around. Oh, it's Dia. Hmm. Since when are we just wandering around? We're usually Wait. taking care of some serious business. Even though it may have nothing to do with our journey. But never mind that. What brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. Nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there, chatting away. What were you two talking about anyway? We're prepping to leave Sumer and head to Fontaine. Huh? Y you serious? What the I heck? I saw that coming. Mm, but you are travelers after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey, how about I gather a few mercs to escort you to? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry. Dia, we'll please! When we I need in. you! <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross <clears> this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? Why does she... She sounds so sad. We'll leave as soon as we've finished a few more preparations. A journey should be spontaneous. Oh, wait a sec. Paimon just remembered there are still a few dishes in Sumeru that Paimon hasn't tried yet. Now, where is that list Paimon made? Okay, but listen, she's just mm. like me. What is this man's problem? I see. Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> Should we go say bye to Nahida? In her case, she'll know from our dreams anyway. We're just gonna leave it up to her looking at our dreams. Oh, good point. Then there's Aww. no need to bother her in the real world. That's not what I want to do. I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. Mm. Ah. Take care. Uh, I don't 
know why, but this is kind of sad. Like, I know that I know that we have to leave, obviously. But I don't know why. Whew. After crossing all that sand and water, we finally made it. Oh, this must be Fontaine's port. Wow. Everything looks so advanced in Fontaine. Paimon's heard that the industry here is extremely developed, and there are all kinds of unusual machines. So I heard, and it's about what I imagine. It's even more impressive than I expected. I'm gonna act like I haven't been here. Nice, <laughs> but maybe it would be better if we found something to do. What do you think? Let's start by meeting the Hydro Archon. Like, good idea. <laughs> She makes it sound like it's so easy. Like, I'm sure it's not going to be that easy. Seeking out the seven is probably still our best source for information at this point. Our journey is to find my sibling and also to find the truth. I guess, yeah, I want to... Yeah, the more we can learn, the better. So, what do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Nahira said that she has a very unique personality. Um, I think she's Whatever probably going to be like a uh, Junko Inoshima Danganronpa. To learn about a nation's god, start with the nation's people. There seems to be some locals talking over there. Let's go see if we can join the party. We're really just going to butt in? If you ask me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you two? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. Travelers, new You're to listening Fontaine. to our conversation. Um, something we wanted to ask, but you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. A uh, play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like, a real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. <clears throat> well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is splendid enough. Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. Is, is that... You are they not that talking the about... Court of Justice okay, the listen. Ethnes, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. Uh, okay, so I know that they mentioned this in the preview about, like, their trials being, like, literal performances, but hearing it in, in this quest is taking me, it's taking me out, because it's like, that's not how that works. But, uh, shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously than that? You would think. Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things, it's just that... Putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. Okay. You can say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. Oh, my and God. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellet, as well as the oratrice mechanique Nouvellet Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. <clears throat> Between the machine and the Chief Justice, false charges and injustice are a thing of the past now. Not the AI. A judgment device created by the Archon, so this is the nation of justice. You're a trees? Is it some kind of machine, too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance. Wait, Paimon almost forgot to ask you a question. Um... Do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Yeah, we're kind of important, and we can just walk in and oh, meet the Hydro easy. Archon. Right? Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. Huh. I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. 
In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots available. You know what? I think she's, I think that she's perfect, and I think that she is an absolute queen. She's managing her time. She said, I'm gonna put my priorities um, where they're important, so you need to make an appointment if you wanna talk to me. You know what? That's valid. Huh. <laughs> is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? <laughs> Wait. I'm sure. Didn't you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. I'm gonna be obsessed with her, aren't That's I? That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time oh to time, my God. I can't get enough of her. Huh. Is First she me? Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. <gasps> She's dramatic? Wait, I'm dramatic? Now. The Hydro Archon is kind of like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellette. Nouvellette. <laughs> Come on. Sure, there's a lot of laws here. But nobody's going to be arrested for saying something disrespectful about the Hydro Archon. Um, why do I feel like they will? Seems the people of Fontaine really like the Hydro Archon, but they don't appear to revere her. All right, I think we get I it. I do. Thank you. At least we now know that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. But who knows how long making an appointment will take? <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. Hey. What are you looking over there for? There's a girl over there? She's been standing alone for quite some time. Huh. Maybe she's Oh, it's Lynette. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? I mean... Uh, maybe we better go check on her. Okay. I'm a little worried. I, I was worried about this, like before but i'm a little worried that i'm going to obsess over farina uh hello there excuse me are you all right huh ah i'm fine thanks oh okay then we just noticed that you seem to be worried about something about many things, actually. But there's nothing I can do but just keep my troubles to myself. Okay, I feel I that. I was just reminiscing <laughs> about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? Uh, you're pointing at the sea. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that you and your brother lived in the water? Maybe they're mermaids. <laughs> no people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, oh. I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly, and the air was filled with the scent of the sea. But now... The water is gradually swallowing our memories. <sighs> it won't be long before it swallows us. Uh, Where am I? Sorry. Simon you know what? what you Let's go back to Sumeru. <laughs> ah, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friends? Oh, and I just are? met her. <laughs> Thanks for looking after my sister. What? She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood. What That's is... All. There's no need for any concern. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. If I had to guess, I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is a traveler. We just arrived in Fontaine. We were just talking with your sister. Uh, even though we didn't really get what she was saying. <laughs> 
I see. She was sharing her intrusive thoughts with us, so even though we just met her. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. <laughs> I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us. Paimon's always the one That's so Aquarius of her. Because I think they're Aquarians, right? There's hardly anything left for me to say with you around, Paimon, because you always steal all of my lines. <laughs> so that's how you think it is? I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. <laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. <laughs> so, what did Lynette mean just now when she said that the water is engulfing your memories? And that it won't be long before it engulfs you too? Oh, that. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of uncertainty. There's no doubt about what's happening in Fontaine now. Oh, what's happening in Fontaine? Where to begin? Hmm. Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Uh, did all the introductions uh, I just noticed that he has out? a cute little brain. That's adorable. Hello, Traveler. Hello, Lenny. It's a pleasure to meet you. And hello, Paimon. Look at Paimon's small hand. Hey! Why didn't Paimon get a handshake? Oh. You're not poking fun at Paimon, are you? <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. What is going on oh. here? All right, then. Well, Paimon's just happy to have a local friend now. By the way, we were just getting ready to go to the Opera House to meet the Hydro Archon. Would you be able to show us the way? Huh. So you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Please, follow me. Uh, you said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. The uh, hello. Oh, <gasps> look at her shoes. Huh. So she's the Hydro Icon? But how did she know we were looking for her? My dear people, rich and poor, rich those and poor? with cup in hand and those with nothing at all, raise your glasses in celebration. If you don't have one, then just raise your hand in lieu. I will raise all of my things for you, madame, lady. As you can all She's see, so cute! Familiar travelers have arrived in our nation. <gasps> her eyelashes! Come, let us make a toast in honor of this traveler and her companion who have journeyed here from distant lands. Ooh, look at the NPC's outfits. Uh, is she talking about us? Nobody here seems to be holding a glass. <laughs> long heard of the turmoil and chaos you left in your wake as you visited other nations. Excuse me? But I welcome you. The turmoil and chaos? No. I have come to receive you. Her eyeball. Personally. Fear is for insignificant cowards. I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion of such meaningless wariness. You can be rest assured. I see clearly your sincerity. Of course, seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. 
It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. <laughs> Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> I... banner. I, Thosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. I'm... I'm... I'm obsessed with her. I knew it. I knew I'd be obsessed with her, but she is the biggest dr dramatic, dramatic brat. And y'all, I do love me a good brat. Yeah. I'm, I'm in big trouble. I'm in big, big, I'm big trouble. Big trouble. But the Hydro Icon's entrance was. Uh... How should Paimon describe it? A little over the top. And you know what? That's her right. Uh, Hydro, that is her right as a woman. How did you know we were coming? Uh, I see. As outlanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic understanding. She is demeaning Don't us. That even the gods can be Continue. into the mediocre and <laughs> I suppose it's only natural for you to be awestruck by my abilities. How you does she know? Stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? Nope. It's my finger for me to know everything about you. Whoa. Talk about sounding high and mighty. Feels like she can't get over herself, and that's her right as a woman. <laughs> Oh, what's with these looks? Perhaps the welcoming ceremony still isn't enough? Hmm, what else should I say? Just say anything. Just keep going. You just keep, you just say anything. Uh, keep going. Is she waiting for us to start talking? Wow, I didn't expect to see Lady Farina here. What a surprise. Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? How did I not the legendary blonde traveler. I'm hey, I'm what's screaming. All the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course. That's the blonde traveler. The one all those stories are. Now about. why are we the blonde traveler? Lady I mean, Farina I know we're blonde, but what? See her. Oh, I bet this is gonna be the duel we're of the We're dueling! Oh, I've got to see this. I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint. Oh my god, these people are they are living for the drama. Everyone here. <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now. My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all their ruckus. <laughs> I love her. You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another land, just as you were hoping to see. Uh, now she wants to fight? Aren't we getting a little ahead of ourselves? Fighting gods? I've got a resume. What? Didn't she say she wanted a duel? They are, they are on the edge of their seats. Are you not afraid? Might I remind you that this is a duel against the Madam, I've fought many a god. What are you trying to do, traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? <laughs> Stand down, Clorend. I admire her bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. She is obviously a true warrior. <laughs> Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled, and a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement. Huh. Yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that easy. Oh my god! <sighs> On Araneus, criminals are always requesting duels oh, criminals? to defend their honor. I'm getting a bit old, to tell the truth. You see, then as the god of justice, I oh, this traveler she's going to put a she's what 
A duel okay, that's so cut. unfair. She's gonna use her AI to to bamboozle right. us. Now that'll be worth seeing. Right. This is Fontaine, after all. It's such a grand opera house. It would be a pity not to use it. Why do you care so much about the crowd's reactions? Seems you've spent a little too much time in the opera house. Because she's filming a reaction video. Duh. We haven't committed any crimes. We literally just got here. <laughs> oh, we have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> what are you talking about? According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within. Oh Fontaine's my God! Is she calling Pymon first an object? Three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Oh, so that's what they've done wrong. <laughs> They don't even know what they... What? Mm, that's our Lady Farina. No one knows the laws of fun. Oh my god, it's an... It is... This is a toxic echo you chamber. What kind of law is that? Wait. Flying object? This is a toxic oh, echo chamber. Is this our chat? Is this our community? Uh... Precisely. Now, if you two have no objections... Then, in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest. My apologies, Lady Karina. <laughs> I don't mean to spoil the fun. But if you would allow me to interject, I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. Yep, she's not an object. Tell her, Winnie. Finally, someone who's not crazy. Wow! Paimon a flying object! Ah... <sighs> Great magician Linny, my beloved citizen. I'll my beloved citizen! Jet, but how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? <laughs> As a magician who just rained on your parade, I naturally should shoulder the responsibility of saving the show. So, with such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. The traveler just watching all of this like... <laughs> Why did I come here? <laughs> Why did I come here? Get me out of this place. This place is unhinged. Get me out. What? What's that on Paimon's back? Hey, when did you do that? Ah, when Lenny patted you on the back. What? Oh, so that's what that was. I was wondering, I was like... There. As you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. This rope has been in the Traveler's hand all along. It was just that no one could see it before. I didn't even see, yeah. Huh? I didn't even see that that, that was... <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Nice one. Huh. I'm not sure what to think. It seems Lady Farina's charges no longer hold water. of unexpected twist that I enjoy. With you here, today's performance can finally be called complete. Performance? You see all this as a performance? I In just think case, consider the matter of your trial that she's perfect. Resolved. The god of justice will not bring charges against an innocent person. But when there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. Okay. <laughs> now you leave Nikita out of this? I look forward to seeing your upcoming <laughs> performance at the Opera House, Mr. If Lenny you want to go Ms. after Lynette. Grandpa, That's if you want to go after uh, the, the, the mochi milk mama... You know, that's none of my business. If you want to go after the drunkard, that's none of my business. But don't go after Nahida. It's simply none of my business. She's gone! Well, that's the most unpredictable Archon Paimon's ever seen. You never even had a chance to ask her anything. But that's a 
problem for future Paimon. That whole scene just now was really... <sighs> Listen, that was the best. I'm so here for this. I love this. I love Fontaine. This is where I was meant to be. Like, if I could live in any nation, it would be here. The drama. And, and, um, um, Farina as my Archon? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. This is where I was meant to be. Okay, okay. Thanks for bailing us out, Lenny. Did you know that was going to happen? Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, so I did a little preparation, just in case. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. So... Now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina um, is? Yeah, she's perfect, she can be duh. confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. I think everyone just doesn't understand her like I do. Is she really that un that wait, I almost said unreasonable. That's just what my brain is. Confusing is a good way to put it. Is she really that reasonable? Anyway, I might have no idea you were a magician, Linny. It sounded like you'll be performing at the Opera House, right? <laughs> I just know a few simple tricks I use to make a living. Lynette is my assistant. It will actually be my first time performing on the most prestigious stage in Fontaine, the Opera House. Why would I want to fix but any of this? Isn't the Opera House this is where perfect. No fixing. When there are no public trials being held, the Opera House hosts a variety of other performances. Oh my to the people what? of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can this be a place little is... And speaking of it's performances, some. I would be remiss to forego this opportunity gifted by fate. Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? Would love my to see it. My excited so. to make new friends. Oh, sure. We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway. I would be delighted. Splendid. In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of first. Is there any way I can help? Oh, you really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. It's a bag. It's a bag of holding. Huh? <laughs> what are they going to use it for? It's a reusable shopping bag. About that. Hmm. You asked me before about the prophecy, right? Let me start by telling you a little more about what it entails. I'm not sure exactly when it began, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Will she really be weeping? That sounds pretty gloomy. Will she really be weeping? Why are people in Fontaine you know what? I have a theory. What is that supposed to mean? Hold on. I have to say it. I have a theory that she's causing Farina. She's causing the water to rise. I don't know if she's doing it intentionally or if it's unintentional, but I feel like she's the one causing it. But once again, no confirming, no denying, none of that. Others say that the people of Fontaine never heeded the first Hydro Archon's warnings and offended Celestia. Mm. But here in Fontaine, evidence is what matters. Does it? There hasn't <laughs> been concrete evidence for any of these claims, so they can only be regarded as conjecture. If even the people in Fontaine don't know what sin they committed, wouldn't it be better just to... Ignore the prophecy completely? Why bother feeling guilty all the time? That's exactly what the people did at first. But in the last few years, the water levels in Fontaine have actually started rising. Okay, but now the water is engulfing our memories. It won't be long before it engulfs us. Hmm. Many places have already been completely submerged and now lie beneath the sea. 
Many people carry on with their lives as before and shrug it off as a natural phenomenon. But my family and I think that the people of Fontaine shouldn't ignore the possibility, which would end up sentencing them to death. We hope that at least the people who reside near the waterfront can move away before it's too late. So, we've started distributing magic pockets to them. As a magical item, these magic pockets it's, have astonishing capacity. It's I'm literally sure a bag of holding from Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, Hyman gets it. I love it. It's like More than a bit of rain. If the prophecy is true, then is there no way to prevent the disaster? Hmm. Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> but who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you'd like to help, then please give these magic pockets to anyone nearby. Be sure to convince them to take it, regardless of what they say. No, these two are so Aquarius. Oh, you already handed out all of the magic pockets? Hm, that was fast. So, what did people have to say? I bet you heard some, uh, interesting opinions. Many are quite stubborn. Yes, but that will change once disaster strikes. I know they'll change their minds, so it's only right to help them prepare. before we leave yes one last thing i have the magic pockets made by a workshop in the court of fontaine since we're out and about i was thinking about bringing him some more materials so you want to collect materials just tell us what the materials look like and we'll help many hands make light work mm -hmm. oh that would be much appreciated we'll need some romero time flowers I remember seeing them near the waterfront on the east side of the harbor. You made quick work of that. I can tell you're an experienced traveler. I've also finished collecting a few here. Maybe next time you'll feel like helping too, Lynette. No way. I'm in power saving mode today. Mm. Otherwise, I fear I may not have any energy left for the performance at the opera house. <sighs> Fine. I really Though the performance is still a long I really way love off. Lynette. Now that we're finished here, we should get ready to head back to the Court of Fontaine. So we're going to the Court of Fontaine before we head to the Opera House? Good. Paima wants a tour of Fontaine's largest city and try Wait, shh. Have you noticed that person over there? The young girl. Huh? <clears throat> What's wrong with her? Paima didn't notice anything. <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Watch her movements carefully. Ooh, she do be stealing. This is a lawless land. Oh, he's right! Shh, keep your voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. Listen, you two sincerely. You can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. Okay, Understa understood. All right, Don't let's she. go. I did it! Stop where Lenny wanted us to wait. We're waiting because she definitely didn't get here. Oh, look! Isn't that her? Get ready to stop her! Time to make the arrest! <laughs> I'm panting because I climbed a very that? large building. She's running the other direction. What should we do? Should we chase her? Oh. All right, anyway, our job is to block this pass. The rest up is the path. The rest up is to Lenny. Let's say this. Uh, you're right. She might also be trying to lure us away. I could teleport to the statue. You're right. Nothing's happening it's fine. for a while now. Paima wonders if Lenny caught the thief. The Let's go. Are you sure that's all she took? You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. N no. That was all. Oh, I can't thank you enough. 
I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Oh, were you returning with the thief had stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. I saw the general direction she went, but Linny twisted his ankle. Oh and no! I needed to make sure he was okay. Oh, did you get hurt, Linny? I'll be all right. It's just a twisted ankle. That's all. In fact, it's feeling it's better just already. Just a twisted ankle. If you want to play at being a hero, at least try not to get hurt doing it. Imagine what would happen if you managed to derail our performance as a result. Wow. <laughs> she doesn't you're even right, care. Right. She said our performance Sorry, is on the line. You dumb idiot. <sighs> I have to admit that the thief was even more skilled than I had anticipated. But at least we were able to get the stolen items back, so it wasn't a complete failure. What a slippery little thief. Guess things turned out all right in the end, though. Lily's initiative paid off. All right, let's put this little detour behind us. We should go to the Court of Fontaine now. It's time. The Aqua... the Aqua Busse. So, we ride this thing to go into the city? What an ingenious way to get around! People in Fontaine really know how to use water. Little do they know, I've already this ridden this. This is an aqua bus. And I jumped off. It allows off. people to travel between several key locations around Fontaine. It's pretty convenient, but the ride can become a little dull after a while. The scenery is always the same. That's why it's better to travel with friends. So you mean it's still boring even when I'm riding with you? <laughs> uh, no, that's not what I meant. It's just that, uh... Well, you don't really talk that much. You don't Besides, talk that much. Besides, it doesn't much. really feel like a real trip when it's just the two of us. It's the same as being at home. <laughs> hmm. Whatever. She is so, like, she is very savage. Guess that's what it's like to be an older brother. <laughs> it's about time for us to leave. Let's get on board. Hi, Jose. Oh my goodness, it's uh, Charlotte. Charlotte, right? I think, I think that was her name. It's been a while since we've seen her. Huh? Get Charlotte. Yes, Charlotte. Traveler, Python, Charlotte! I did already meet Farina. Oh, yes, I and I and I love her. Riding the aquabus in the story of my life, this is big news. What are you doing in Fontaine? I didn't hear anything about you paying us a visit. Yeah, it's quite the coincidence. Is it only temporary that you can get Lena? He's on the move. It's not surprising that nobody knew we were coming. Because I thought uh, it was temporary. I could be wrong though. I still have no idea how the Hydro Archon knew about us. Oh, let Paimon introduce you to our new friends. Oh, no oh, she's permanently free. Okay, awesome. Pylon. I would recognize the great magician Linny and his assistant Lynette anywhere. I wouldn't be much of a reporter if I didn't know who they were. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steambird. Nice to meet you. From the Steambird, huh? We've often relied on your paper to promote our performances. It's an honor to meet you. <sighs> now that everyone knows each other, Fontaine suddenly doesn't feel like such an unfamiliar place. So, what have you been up to lately, Charlotte? Any big news? Not too much. When there isn't any breaking news, I mainly cover the trials at the Opera House. You can still manage to keep readers' attention as long as you tell things from a clever enough angle, even if it's the same old topics. For example, reporting on how a scammer once deceived vulnerable girls into relationships, or how a financial criminal was once so poor Jeez. that they ate a single piece of bread what in, in the five world? days. That would definitely get my attention, but that's not really the kind of news you're after. Oh, you're right. Seems you know me pretty well. 
What I'm really after is exclusive, sensational news pieces that could shake the country. It really These is. Smaller stories are a waste of my talents. Oh, I just remembered. I've been following a case lately. Well, a series of cases, actually. You mean the serial disappearances of young women case? That's right. These stories are the talk of the town right now, and it's probably the most mysterious case we've ever seen. If I'm the first with a draft ready to publish when the case is finally cracked, and it's the headline story in the Steambird, oh! when that happens, I bet all the other reporters will shed tears of envy. I've already gathered all kinds of materials. I just can't this, wait for the truth to be refused. This nation needs help. So, what is and I wouldn't change it for anything. I would I would never change anything. <laughs> There's so much drama. The first missing girl case happened almost 20 years ago. And ever since, after a period of time, another girl disappears. What the cases have in common is that the girls are all of a similar age and that they've all vanished without a trace. But the scariest part is that to this day, None of the girls have ever been found. Many suspects have been arrested over the years in connection with this case, but shortly after each arrest, another disappearance would always happen. Then there must be more than one criminal at work. Maybe there are copycat criminals? Yes, it's possible. But either way, I believe that every case has some precise truth behind it, waiting to be exposed. Yes, I agree. And at the very least, the family of those missing girls deserves some sort of explanation. <laughs> I just imagined for a second what I would do if Lynette were to suddenly disappear. I'd pay any price to get her back, Aww. and then find a way to track down the culprit. I love two Please siblings. Please don't imagine that, Linny. Aquabus Reno, you're arriving at your destination. Uh, hey, Jeremiah, I love Farina. Considering already um, C6. Hey, we're almost there! Look! And I don't have. Now that I think about it, I don't think I have any Archon that is. that has. Oh, you know what? I was gonna say, I don't think I have any Archon that has a lot of constellations, but no, I lied. Because I believe that Zhongli is C4, C5. Yeah, I forgot about Zhongli. Charlotte is uh, the true, definitely a true crime girly. Listens to the podcast, watches those YouTube videos. Absolutely. I actually think Effigy has. Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you. Life should be full of pleasant little surprises C6. like this. Yeah, us as well. The ride went by too quickly. Ah, oh, I have an interview to get to. I should get going before I'm late. Okay, Hyman hopes we can chat again soon, Charlotte. See ya. I love Lumine's little wave. <laughs> Bye now. Oh, be sure to stop by and see me at the Steambird when you have time. What a tough job. Always running around and interviewing everyone. <sighs> well, where should we go now? If you don't mind, how about we stop by my home first? Besides, I still have all the materials we collected. Sure. We wouldn't mind at all. This city is so huge, Paimon wouldn't know where to start anyway. Where did everyone else go? I have some new friends that I would like to introduce. Oh, <gasps> baby! Out a moment ago. Look at his freckles. Everyone is getting busier now that father will be returning soon. I suppose that can't be helped. Allow me to introduce you to my little brother, Fremine. He is a phenomenal diver. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! Oh, you sound very proud to have a diver as a brother, Linny. He is a baby. <laughs> uh, Linny? Could you come here for a moment? Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Hmm? What is it, Fremine? Do you have something to tell me? It's all right. You go ahead. Hmm. Okay.
Okay, I see. Is everything all right? Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. We were just discussing a little housework. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, uh, before I forget, the Traveler and I collected more materials to make magic pockets. Were you able to get any, Fremine? Yes. I went diving and gathered lots He's of materials. So cute. I was about to give them to you. That's our Fremine. Always quick with the underwater work. All right, I'll take these to the workshop. Right, his freckles are adorable. I'm making, um, I'm making some, or uh, I'm eating sinigang. It's a Filipino dish. It's like a, almost like a stew that you eat over rice. Hmm, looks like rain. Oh, you're right. But wasn't it clear and sunny just a moment ago? Hmm, Fontaine's weather sure is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that's just how it is here. It often rains on days where there are trials being held in the Opera House, but don't worry, it'll clear up soon enough. <sighs> hmm? What's wrong, Fremine? There's a legend about the rain that I tend to believe. It's said that a dragon of water once resided in Fontaine. Though we don't know where the dragon went, every time it weeps, the skies will cloud up and pour out rain. When I was a child, my mother told me that if I wanted to go outside and play, I should yell toward the sky at the top of my lungs. Hydro Dragon! Hydro Dragon! Don't cry! Uh huh. Could that Hydro Dragon- Hydro Dragon be the Elemental Dragon in Fontaine? Another one of the Elemental Dragons of Teva. If it's an Elemental so Dragon, sweet. then having the power to make it rain wouldn't be very unusual. Hmm. Let Paimon try something. Hydro Dragon! Hydro Dragon! Don't cry! Hmm? Hmm. It didn't seem to work. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be of any use. <clears throat> it is just a legend, after all. You know, you might be a more popular magician if you understood the concept of romanticism. Or could at least play along. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It might be because we've never met the Hydro Dragon. Perhaps it can't be comforted by the words of strangers. The headache kills you. Oh no. I hope you feel hmm. better. It rained for longer than I suspected. Oh, it's already getting late. Was there something you needed to do, Linny? Yeah, some preparations for the show at the Opera House. I need to find a way to catch the last Aquabus of the day. On the day of the performance, just ride the Aquabus to the island of Araneus. I'll have Lynette meet you at the fountain in front of the Opera House. Sounds good. You go ahead, Lenny. See you at the performance. Oh, uh, are you leaving now? What is it, Fremenay? No worries. Get some rest. Oh, I get it. You feel nervous delivering the materials for the magic pockets, is that it? Perhaps we could trouble the Traveler to help us take these materials to the Beaumont workshop and deliver them to the owner there? I'm afraid that Fremine can be quite introverted. And the boss there tends to be pretty talkative. Fremine has always been a little afraid of her. No trouble at all! Don't worry, we're on the case! Fremine is going the through it. I'm quite useless when it comes to such tasks. I'll think of a way You're to make it useless. up to you. You're not useless. You're just a baby. Oh, no need, no need. This will be a walk in the park for us. Instead of trying to find. Uh, hello? Is there anyone here? Oh, hello there. New customers? Estelle. Looking to buy, or do you need something made? Or perhaps you're just looking for a chat with me. Oh, oh no. We're just here to deliver some materials. Here they are. They're for making... Uh, what were they called again? Ah, these must be for magic pockets. I could tell right away. I've already made several orders worth now. Do we need to pay? No, no need. They've already prepaid several batches worth. Oh yeah, Estelle's well, outfit is great. They told me great. what they'd be using Hi, me Zelda, for. Hi Zelda, how are you? I even offered them a discount. But they insisted on paying the full amount, saying that I had a business to run. <laughs> it seems both their hearts and their pockets are made of gold. <laughs> 
Wow. So, is Lenny actually loaded? Mm, I can't say for sure, but who knows? Maybe there's good money to be made being a magician in Fontaine. Probably. Hey, is this machine what you use to make stuff here? It looks really advanced. Why use your hands when a machine can do the work? It would be a waste not to use the latest technology. And wasting is a kind of crime. But where does a big machine like that get its power from? Ah, uh, well, it's a little complicated. I'm not sure I can put it in layman's terms for you. But basically, everything we usually use here in the city is powered by indemnium. It's a type of energy that's produced from trials. Huh? Oh, that's right. How can trials produce energy? I forgot about that. The trials... Well, I'm not completely like sure of all the details trials. myself. But basically... When a trial is in session, the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinale harvests people's belief in justice and converts it into energy to be used all around Fontaine. I don't, I'm not going to be able to so say that. So that's what its other function is? Hmm. I haven't heard that the Oratrice the drama was created fuel. by the Archon to make judgments. That's so true. But, <sighs> Paimon still doesn't get it. How could something unreliable like people's beliefs be turned into a stable power source for these machines? Well, Venti and Nahida both said the guys rely on belief to obtain power. Mm hmm Oh, yeah! So that means the Hydro Archon relies on the machine to take the energy created by belief and turn it into power for all of Fontaine, right? Even though I've never heard anyone really put it that way before, it sounds like it makes sense. Besides Indemnidium, we have another type of energy called Numusia. It isn't produced by the power Numa. of the Archon, but it is unstable by nature. Even now, it still cannot be widely used Xenoblade. by civilians. <laughs> I thought I'd find you hard at work, but here you are chatting the day away. Since you're already talking, I'm sure you wouldn't mind a few words with me. Y you again? Didn't I already promise you that I'd have Stay away from her. to Conferry of Cabriere by next month? Why are you hounding Stay away me from now? her. Yeah, but how do we know that you won't go running off by the end of this month? I want 50% today. Wait, no, 70%. Huh? You. Seems business isn't so great for the workshop. Mm -hmm. We've already finished our job and delivered the materials. Maybe now's a good time to leave? Why would we leave? You're hey, right. Hey, hold we on. Can't... Child? Before you go around trying to collect payments, why don't you settle your own debts first? The jump scare. If Confrary of Cabriere wants to poach clients from Northland Bank, that's fine. But I'm afraid you still owe the bank a hefty sum of more. So why don't we work things out between us first, before you get back to your little conversation here? Ah, uh, you're from uh, Northland Bank. Uh, but we said we'll pay everything we owe next month. Why are you hounding me now? Uh, Traveler, Paimon! I didn't think I'd run into you here in Fontaine. Sir, what are you talking what are the about? Chances? We're surprised to see you too. What are you doing here in Fontaine? You didn't want to stay in Stejnaya? We sure seem to have run into a lot of friends today. Fontaine really is a curious place. <laughs> Long story short, I've already been in Fontaine for some time now. And oh, honestly, yeah? things have been pretty boring. But it seems that fate brought our paths together today. Not only will I have some good friends here now, but ones who always seem to find trouble. Either way you look at it, it seems things are going to get a lot more interesting now. Pretty sure we'd want to avoid anything that you'd find interesting. Besides, our trip here has gone pretty well so far. Right, Traveler? I think we've already weathered enough storms for now. I don't mind a little excitement every now and then. Let me say that one. <clears throat> uh, hey, you, Northland Bank boy. Aren't you forgetting something? Don't interrupt. It's not often I run into the Traveler like this. Why don't, don't you interrupt. wait for me over there for a while? Uh, you kidding? Aren't you the one looking for us? You really expect us to sit and twiddle our thumbs while you catch up with your friends? Listen to me, boy. If you want your Mora, fine. Boy. Why don't you come and take it? Hey, I just said not to interrupt. Oh, by the way, Traveler, the last time I took Tony oh my God, and Tusser ice fishing, Tusser said... Hey, that's way over the line. All right, boys, let's see who has to pay up Me? now. 
his uh, ass. Can you at least let me finish one sentence? Fine. Though the bank told me not to get rough with our clients. He's trying to have small You're talk. The ones who started it. This is an act of self-defense. <laughs> you two will have to be my witnesses, okay? Go ahead, they're all yours. I'm sure this won't take long. That definitely wasn't uh What's your deal, very hard. Brad? How are you so strong if you're just a staffer from Snezhnaya's Northland I Bank? I mean... Wait, don't tell me you're... <laughs> oh, now you notice. It's a little late, don't you think? Just make sure you understand that you don't mess with Northland Bank. Got it? Uh, huh? Now's my chance. <laughs> he really thought that because huh. he didn't have his That was weird. His power. But what is going Yeah, what is happening? Are you feeling all right? I'm not sure. It's as if I suddenly lost control of my hydro powers when I needed them. Maybe there's something wrong with my vision? Strange. How could that happen? First time Paimon's ever heard of someone losing control of their vision. Never mind. It doesn't matter. If I want to stay sharp, I shouldn't be relying too much on my vision anyway. Besides, I always have my delusion in case I need it. You better not use your delusion too often. So what are you doing in Fontaine, child? And don't see its work for Northland Bank. Well... I guess it's because I've been in a bad mood lately. Huh? What, what? kind of reason is that? Yeah, what kind of reason Wait, is that? Wait, since when do you feel down about anything? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I still have a lot to learn about myself. But recently, there seems to be some sort of restless power stirring inside of me. And I don't know why, but every now and then I feel like I'm in a terrible mood. control of your vision just now is connected with that power you're feeling inside you know what i think it's depression mm. i think that you're depressed a possibility have you tried yoga have you drank some water today so about this power do you have any idea where it came from i can't remember if i ever mentioned it before but when i was 14 i fell into some unknown abyss it was during that time i learned nearly all of my abilities the one who took me under her wing and taught me was named skirk she was always quiet and very mysterious. Nobody knew where she came from or what she had been through, and she was always very strict when teaching me combat techniques. One time, I asked her why she was willing to take me on as an apprentice. From what I could make of her answer, it was... because I had awakened it, and traces of it remained on me. She said that all my combat training would be useful in the future. But... What is it? What did you awaken? <clears throat> she never explained that. But my guess is that it's related to a dream I saw when I had just fallen into that abyss. In my dream, I was in the deepest depths of the sea. And the boundless seabed was all around me. But in front of me appeared a whale that was so massive, I felt like I couldn't breathe. A whale? When we fought against you before, you summoned a huge whale that seemed to leap at us. Is that the one? <laughs> That's just an abstract form of a whale that I create using my elemental powers. It takes that shape because the scene I dreamt of the whale has always been stuck in my mind. I'll never forget it. So you used the whale as inspiration for one of your moves? Huh. Seems a little twisted to Paimon. It's very possible that the power inside you is connected to your incident in the abyss. So why don't you just go ask your master? Maybe she knows the answer. You make it sound so easy. Ever since the incident I experienced there, I've never stopped searching for Master Skirk and that unknown abyss. But it's been years now, and I've still found nothing. There isn't even a trace of the place where I remember falling into the abyss. Sounds like some kind of ghost story. Yeah, I'm out of leads at this point, but there's nothing more I can do. It seems that strange encounters in this world tend to be elusive like that. 
Sounds like it oh, could be linked. Seems the time really I see what you did there. You. I That's just perfect. remembered I have somewhere else I need to be, so I should get going. What? More work for the Northland Bank? Uh, no, it's more of a personal appointment. Lately, I've been sparring with some of Fontaine's official champion duelists whenever I'm feeling bored. Official champion duelists? You mean it's their job to duel? Yep. In Fontaine, before a criminal goes to court, they're given one chance to defend their honor by requesting a duel with an official champion duelist. What is th the this champion place duelists is are wild. All powerful fighters selected from among the nation's best. And the duel itself is a no holds barred it fight. It literally with is a no trial by combat. Stopping point. Crying. So engaging in such a duel is regarded as a symbol of defending your honor. If a criminal manages to win the duel, they'll be acquitted. But if they lose, they'll have no choice but to stand trial. And the worst case scenario is that you're simply killed in the duel. Though it's rumored that Fontaine has a death penalty, from what I can tell, no one has ever been officially sentenced to death. So really, the only people who opt to duel are those who have suffered a grave injustice in being accused, or those who greatly value their honor. Otherwise, why gamble with your life? So, do many people actually get out of their trials by winning the duel? Apparently, it's exceedingly rare for anyone to actually win. Fontaine probably enacted this system as a way to show that the nation respects the honor of its citizens. Besides, None of the champion duelists are to be trifled with, which is exactly why I was itching to face them as soon as I got to Fontaine. Apparently, the one I'm meeting today, Clorend, is the strongest of the champion duelists. Oh, Clorend is the, the one where, she like, she is popping out, today. right? Well, that's child for ya! Hmm. Paimon feels like we heard that name somewhere before. Mm-hmm. When we met the Hydra Archon, I'm terrible <laughs> at remembering names. Oh. Before I forget, I want you to have this. She does look like Morag. Yes, Your I agree. Vision? You're seriously just giving it away? I'm just worried that it could become uncontrollable again. I'd be pretty upset if it got in the way of my duel. So I think I'll be better off without it for now. Besides, really? I just need you to hold on to it for a short while. I'll come retrieve it when I have some time later. What in the Lena world? Knows what you're up to. You just want an excuse to come talk to us again, don't you? <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? I'll be in touch later. He does have his delusion, you're right. But still, it's still worrisome. <laughs> that sneaky guy. He said he's been feeling down lately, but he seemed the same as ever to Paimon. <sighs> well, seems we don't have much to do for now. We might as well walk around and see Tay the is going through the it. Uh. Wow! Who could have seen that coming? The reporter who was barely around for most of the story was the murderer all along! Hey, don't blurt it out, Paimon. It's rude to spoil the mystery for everyone else. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Paimon was just surprised, that's all. <sighs> never thought I'd see the day Paimon when Paimon would enjoy reading. The murder mystery novels here are amazing! I saw that one and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna say it. The whodunits here in Fontaine are a lot different than the light novels you see from Yai Publishing House. Both have their merits, but Paimon thinks this style of novels are more... Well, novel. <laughs> it's so exciting to I knew she was gonna say that. ...when the mystery is uncovered, especially in the one Paimon was just reading. You should buy a copy and read it too. I'm good, you already spoiled who the murderer is. <laughs> Paimon will be more careful next time. Uh, hey, shouldn't we be heading to the Opera House to see Linny's performance soon? It's almost time for the show to start, so we should get going. Now this is fancy! The Opera at Eclaise. What a place to hold a performance! No wonder Linny and Lynette were looking forward to it. Huh, looks like there's a lot of people standing around the fountain up ahead. Oh, Archon. Please bless us with a bright and healthy child. We pray. Oh. I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our child is healthy and lives a peaceful life. <laughs> I guess if there are, kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. <laughs> Maybe this is one of the customs in Fontaine. 
There sure are a lot of couples here. Here we go. What's wrong? I need to focus. Vache. Vache. Did you just say something, Paimon? No, Paimon didn't say anything. Are you hearing things? Strange. Whose voice was that just now? Or what is that, French? Welcome to the Fountain of Lucene. All the water flowing through Fontaine converges here. It's customary for newlyweds to come here and wish for children. Oh. <gasps> Lynette, you scared Paimon. Why did you get here? Hmm. When he asked me to wait here for you, remember? Uh, right. By the way, Lynette, I seem to hear a faint voice just now. What do you mean? There are a lot of people here right now. It seemed as if the voice was coming from the fountain. Huh? Hey, you're not trying to scare Paimon, are you? <laughs> Besides, it's the middle of the day. It's not the time for eerie things. Hmm, I see. I might be able to tell you something that could help explain the voice you heard. In fact, you might not be imagining things at all. I suspect that what you heard is a result of your hypersensitivity to the hydro element. Others in my family have had similar experiences. It's because of her sensitivity to the hydro element? But what would hearing a voice have to do with elemental power? When do you cry, Paimon? Wait, what? What does that have to do with anything? Just answer me. When do you cry? Um, that's a good question. Uh, when, when I'm Paimon sad, when I'm happy, sad? when I'm mad, oh, when, when I'm hungry. Happy. Oh, and also when Paimon's really, really scared. That too. Then you should understand that tears contain your most intense emotions. Like I just mentioned, the Fountain of Lucene is where all the flowing water in Fontaine converges. Even the tears that fall to the ground will eventually gather here. So maybe what you heard was the intense emotion coming from someone's tears. Um, huh, that's an interesting explanation. I'm not sure whether I buy it, though. So, what did the voice say? It seemed to be calling out someone's name. Huh. If you were hearing their emotions, then Paimon wonders what happened to them. Rather than worrying about them, we should worry about my brother first. Don't let that calm look of his fool you. He tends to get pretty nervous just before a performance. So chatting with Linny might help him relax a little before he goes on stage. Oh, right. That makes sense. Let's go in and see Linny. Ah, also Frosty. Good to see you. I knew you two would come. Are you kidding? We want to miss it for the world. We've been looking forward to it. <laughs> I can tell, judging by how early you've arrived. But you're actually right on time. The audience still hasn't started entering the venue yet, which means now is the perfect chance for us to take you to the best seats in the house. Wait just a moment. I'll fetch the tickets. The Opera House has assigned seating, so you always have to make reservations. I've already reserved your seats, and here are your tickets. Ooh, front row seats! Thanks, Linny! Don't mention it. There's no need to keep thanking me. Hey, Linny! Could you come over here and take a look at this? Oh, I'll be right there. Seems there's an issue with the stage props over there. That's Cal, my assistant, calling me. I'll go lend him a hand. Okay. Um, best get busy, sure. Yeah, we'll just go to our seats. You go ahead, Linny. Oh, these should be our seats. Come on, let's sit down. Ooh, this is really nice. Hello? Uh... <laughs> Hello? This is awkward? Uh... <laughs> hey, 
Have you had the chicken? Hey, traveler, <laughs> maybe we should strike up a conversation with the person next to us. Since we're sitting together and the rest of the place is practically empty still, it's kind of awkward if we don't say anything. You're up, Paimon. Uh, you little... Guys. You little? Excuse me. Excuse me. I did not realize you felt awkward. I am terribly sorry. I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like. Oh, uh, so you heard all of that, did ya? <laughs> Boy, you sure have good ears. Paimon thought she was keeping her voice down. Uh, wait, that's not it, Paimon's sorry. Um, Paimon's the one who was being rude, talking under her breath like that. Uh, so let's talk, but, uh... What should we talk about? Can I ask a question? Who voices this man? Like, I feel like I've heard it before. But it's Ray Chase. Okay, this is getting even more awkward. Uh, oh, Paimon's got it. You're also here early and sitting in the front. Are you a friend of Linny's too? <clears throat> a friend, you say? He's fantastic. Oh, Mr. Linny, I love like Ray. To be my friend, I would be more than happy Very talented. To oh, so you're not friends with Linny then? Oh, this is getting more awkward by the second. Ah, uh, Paimon nearly forgot to make her introduction. Nice to meet you. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the traveler. We just arrived in Vaudain. It is an honor to meet you two. I have heard of your deeds across to that. And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. I am... Oh, Monsieur Nervillette. What an honor it is to have you here Nervillette. to see my show. Ah, Mr. Linney. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in person. Oh, wait. Nervillette? Yeah, Can Ray Chase wait? has incredible range. Hmm? I saw you all chatting just now, but it seems you still don't know who Monsieur Nervillette is. Allow me to introduce you to Fontaine's Chief Justice. That seat is oh. always reserved for him. It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty here in Fontaine. Ooh. Is he? Uh, sorry for being so rude just now. Paimon had no idea you were such an important person. No offense taken. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. Nearly every person has their usual reserved seat, so I'm not so special, really. And by the way, I should probably let you know, even though I would prefer not to, there's someone sitting up there in the very <gasps> seat. My girl! Pose for quite a oh my god, she's now. just like me. I she's striking she's a pose. I trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later. Otherwise, she may become flustered. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I need a I need some more huh? screenshots of her. Dang it! Oh, it's Farina, the Hydro Archon. Huh. She sure has a smug and satisfied look on her face. Guess she has no idea that everyone be nice to her. Act. Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. We may now <laughs> enjoy the show. Huh? So is this what things are like between the Chief Justice and the Hydro Archon? All right. Please wait just a moment longer. I've pretty much finished my preparations, and the performance will start as soon as the audience has made their way to their seats. Yay! The show is finally about to start! <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't be excited about this. And then we'll try to stay quiet. Stop. <laughs> Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. 
<laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's nervous. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, two vision holders who can freely manipulate elemental powers performing magic is not true magic at all. So, I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental powers will have nothing to do with what you will witness on the stage today. Both Lynette and myself have removed our visions for the show. Oh! That way, even the gods won't be able to help us. Oh, good point. That's what makes the show real magic. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. Lynette will now exit the stage to make some preparations. I know you might miss her, but don't worry. She'll be coming right back on stage momentarily. You might Perhaps miss her. in an unexpected way. I'm sure she'll be stealing the spotlight soon enough. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing I should say. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. A magician's greatest skill oh, I blinked. is making <laughs> things disappear or appear. The Ooh, possibilities it's a, it's a are endless. what you came for these little tricks you've seen them all before so it's time for something truly extraordinary don't you think this one's a little tricky Ooh. using this water tank I shall make my sister vanish completely Right before your very eyes. No! I was supposed to take a screenshot of her. Cries. It's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. Uh... I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around oh, now. Oh, okay. I was like, is this supposed to be happening? Luckily, it's me on stage. So let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. Um... I got it! Lynette, are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi. Hey, Zelda. Uh -huh. Look at her! What a queen. Now, how did they do that? I'm taking so many screenshots of Farina, y'all. It's embarrassing, but I kind of love her. She just used the waypoint. Wait a minute. <laughs> what in the world just happened? How did he do that? Hyman didn't seem to do anything. Wasn't Lynette inside the water tank? How did she disappear and then reappear out of nowhere? What a show. If you could see easily through his tricks, then that would mean that his skills are still lacking. To appreciate magic, Ooh, his eyes are pretty. Rather than getting caught up in trying to see that which has been intentionally hidden. Huh, guess you're right. Hyman couldn't believe her eyes when Lynette reappeared. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad you enjoyed that performance. But our magical journey has only just begun. I've prepared even more astonishing surprises for everyone here. The magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. 
I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank was impressive enough. But Lynette is still I wonder if my the people in the back after all can hear the bar. In which case, the bartenders. I have ample time to make all necessary preparations. So, for my next trick, I will require the participation of one lucky audience member. Please, if my assistants could bring out the magical boxes now. There are two boxes and only two boxes. One is here and one is there in if, the aisle If you the know, audience. you know. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have already guessed our next magic trick. <laughs> A swap. I don't like it when Our there's swaps in magic shows because I, I feel like it always starts. Magic box. After one minute, like like drama starts from the opposite box. Now please, everyone, pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. Wow, how's he gonna do this? Hey, do you think this is all magic tricks, or does Lenny have actual superpowers? <laughs> Let's watch and see. I'm sure we can spot how he does it. I'm gonna say that. The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. It selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Now then, let's begin. Oh, let me see. Oh, row seven, seat three. Congratulations. You now have the she is to back there vibing and she's like an oh no minute. please come forward my assistant will take you beside the magic box this poor woman I'm sorry it might be a little cramped inside, she even looks concerned no nervous. we've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible you don't need to do anything but no matter what strange things may happen don't come out of the box if the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up? You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Before just like, I enter the magic box, there is one more thing I need to ask listen, the audience to do. I was bored. Could you all give me a countdown? On this Saturday like evening, this. I just wanted 60, to go see a show. 59, 58. Just keep counting How down. How did I end up here? You can go a little faster or slower if you like. I won't be able to see anything in the pitch black box, so I'll be relying on your voices to know when time is up. Oh, and no tricks now. If you quickly count from 60 in just 30 seconds, then I'll be in a tough spot. Ooh, Paimon kind of wants to count faster after hearing him say that. <laughs> I'm sure Lenny's prepared with the whole crowd counting together. You couldn't even if you wanted to. I'm going to say this. No, one. no, that won't do. I can see it in your eyes. You still can't be trusted. Let's practice together. At least she won't have to listen to the bartenders on, anymore. Right, she's me. in the back. 60, 59, 58. 60, 59, 58. 58. That's right, perfect. Keep it going. All right. 57. I'll see you all on the other side. 56. counting. 50, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51. 53, 52? Huh? Why aren't you counting, Nervalet? I am counting in my head. I think things are exciting enough in here as it is. <laughs> Merely a consequence of my identity and personality. Do not worry about me. Just enjoy the show. What does that even mean? You look so serious that Paimon thought you might be feeling uncomfortable or something. 40, 39, 38! They are excited. They're excited to count. Mr. Linny, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just double checking the direction of the magic. It would be a disaster if we get sent to the wrong place. <laughs> 420, 69 lead. <laughs> right above the audience. <laughs> Even though he's saying that, Lenny doesn't seem nervous at all. I think it's all part of the show. Maybe he's just su supremely confident in his abilities. What? Ah, what was that noise? Did you hear it too? Did it come from the stage? Maybe it was just to divert our attention? Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. 25! 24! 23! 
What's wrong, Mr. Linney? I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. What is going on? Is this normal? It's black in here. I can't tell left from right. Never mind the decorations. There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Not 42. I know it can be tiring to do such a long countdown. <clears throat> Ten seconds and change is still plenty of time. Ten, nine, there now. Eight, 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 swapping two seven. people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician. Why like they stop counting? He all get it right the first time. Another cutscene though. Hey, wait, is this the back one? I can't tell. What they is going? The same inside, huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven. Hey, slow down! Six. Honestly! Dang it, I missed it! Four! Three! Uh, two! That doesn't count! One! Happy New Year! <gasps> Shoot! Uh. I keep missing. How did he do that? I like how I ask that, like it's... Ooh! What in the Danganronpa is going on? Huh? Is this part of the show? Mr. Linney, you're going to use magic to fix the stage now. The What happened? Oh no. Maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards, secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this time. <laughs> yes, that's right. If this was just an accident, then we must investigate the cause. But if this was all part of some scheme, then... Then those accountable will not escape the judgment of the God of Justice! No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. Unfortunately, the person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Where is the lady? Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank. Nope. Which then I disagree. The tank to Something fall happened. Onto the stage. As of now, we are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance. And there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. Oh. Uh, the, the serial disappearances case? <gasps> that's the case that Charlotte mentioned before. Let's see. And that's the case that Charlotte mentioned before. And to pull it off like this. <laughs> I know. I know the truth. I can see through the whole thing. Really, using such a shallow and obvious mystery as his finale. Did he really underestimate us that badly? I'm taking a screenshot of this. Look at her. She's she is the best. I'm obsessed with her. I say that our powerful magician, Mr. Linney, is now the prime suspect. For the serial disappearances case. She just starting. She's starting huh? trouble for nothing. Why me? This whole thing was an accident. Oh, 
This all oh. occurred during your magic oh. show, did it not? It occurred during your the magic show. The missing disappeared after being chosen, did she not? The deceased is one of your assistants, is he not? <laughs> now that I think about it, that whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. Get him. He could right. be innocent, but I don't give a shit. Get him. He's in the box on the stage the entire time. We can even hear his voice. C incorrect. Besides, before the show, he told us that he would like to catch the criminal behind the disappearances. He could possibly mean catching himself. Um, me when I lie, he was lying. <laughs> He's a suspect at most. It's hard to believe all this happened during the show. Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, may I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Linney and his associates? What about it? You are pressing charges? Huh? I just think that he... Well, She's like, oh shit. I uh, think it might be a little early to talk about formally pressing charges. <laughs> But what Lady Farina said just now makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Looks like mm -hmm. she's gonna personally deliver justice. Mm -hmm. A kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. They really do believe Lady her. Farina like, whatever she says, they believe her. It's incredible. Uh, I mean, of course, my dear people. But what excites me even more than the obvious truth before our eyes is the opponent I'll be facing. That's right. I mean you, <laughs> Traveler. Now why am I in it? Support Lenny, won't you? After all, he was the one who helped you Um, excuse me, I just met that man like, like three hours ago. <laughs> then there's no problem at all. You know, the Traveler and I Do already I had a duel the first time Oh shoot, time I don't have it. Ugh. Anyway, Junko Inoshima Not stands with like Lin's that. Help. Our little duel ended in a draw. <laughs> but draws really are the most boring. No, girl, what are you outcome. talking about? Girl. So, no more draws. Between the two of us, <laughs> there must be a clear winner and loser. And what better place to hold such a riveting showdown and decide the true victor Listen, than Listen, in my head she on won. The grandest of stages. The opera Epicles. Huh. It wasn't a draw. She obviously lost last night. <laughs> I understand. Charges have now been pressed. This is me and when Larry such, beats me in triple triad. Is in order. Well, traveler, seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside for a moment, I would like to ask you, are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him in this case? I have not passed the bar. I've never even been to lawyer school. Now, why am I an attorney? <laughs> Very well. The trial will be held a day from now in the Opera House. Both sides may investigate the scene to build Excuse their Excuse me, the <laughs> I'm not qualified for this. <laughs> Can I get? Can I get a phone Lydia a friend? I know I know a suspects, couple of people. And shall remain within the opera house. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> oh, I love her way. Really quite looking forward to hearing it. Sorry about everything that happened just now. Were you frightened? Of course! Who wouldn't be scared after witnessing an accident like that? Yeah, I'm a little shaken up myself. How could this happen? And poor Cal. I know you already claimed that you would defend me, but now it's just us talking. Tell me, do you think I could possibly be the murderer? <laughs> So, to be honest... No, I'm just kidding. I literally don't know. I don't know, my man. Alright, it's hard to say. I understand. 
Even I'm not sure what happened, so I can only imagine how difficult it is for you to grasp the situation. I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But, if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries, such that all that's left is confusion. I don't know whether what happened there on the stage was purely an accident or not, and I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If someone tampered with my performance, then we need to figure out what they did. Even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off in just one minute. Yes, it is very strange, but there's no denying what happened. Which one. is precisely why we need to investigate! As this book says, <clears throat> The impossible could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible. <laughs> Where did you get those glasses? I must bought them when we were reading at the bookshop in the city earlier. Pretty cool, huh? What? Don't worry. Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't from our travel funds. What savings? I think they look cute on you, Paimon. Okay, that's very sweet, yeah, Lynette. Good taste, Lynette. <laughs> <laughs> that's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now. I need to get back to my normal self. What's it, what's it like to snap out of it? But with the guards <laughs> watching our every move, it's going to be especially difficult for Lynette and I to prove our own innocence. Good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. <sighs> Thanks for that. We'll be counting on you. They really be acting like yes, I've got thank experience. You so much. I won't let you down. I'm used to this sort of thing. Has anyone done a Legally Blonde um, meme yet with the Traveler? Paimon has a question first. Where did Lynette go during the performance? Oh, well, I'm afraid that would involve some of our essential trade secrets as magicians. The secrets behind our magic are past saving, Linny. I suppose you're right. The truth behind our tricks is going to be important evidence that will be weighted during the trial. <sighs> is truly a pity. As a magician, our magic show is a work of art. We've poured countless hours and spared no effort in perfecting it. But if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the truth behind what happened, then it will be well worth it. We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our magic tricks. We'll go speak with the guards, and in the meantime, you can go investigate the stage and the seating areas. The investigation teams are still here. Detective Paimon is on the case! I'm losing my mind at those glasses. Stop, this is actually so cool. E? Oh! My god, this is Danganronpa! This is literally... This is literally Danganronpa. No, it's... it's this is where the magic box was struck. Cal and weren't inside the box at the- Oh crap! I forgot! Cal weren't inside the box at that moment. He might have dodged the falling water tank. The electric guitar just pops off for no reason. Like, yeah, our friend just died. But we're also- we are jamming. Oh, Fanny, you're still Thank melting. You. It really is. Yes, both of you. So hot. Over here. Who is this? You for a while now. Huh? You mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No. And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? No. <laughs> From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its Navia. Ooh, she's so pretty. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. Boss? I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus. The, the Turks have entered the chat, Photog! Are under my purview. 
Where's Axel? Boss. Axel? Where's Reno? <laughs> Wrong redhead. I am Wrong Square Enix redhead. President. Malus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You I love her boss. outfit. Just I'm actually obsessed. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. So you want to investigate as well? That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial Oh my god, cases. I think her design is my probably my favorite so far. My father's time. Besides Farina, of course. From the look of things, but all of them have I incredible find designs. An unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too. That's why we're looking for clues now. But how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Uh, okay. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence. <laughs> Jer! She? No, she does! But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back Her down little ribbons are so cute! Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Well, what's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times, but liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Well, when you put it like that... My god. Alright, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. But don't worry, you won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? No. Absolutely not. Um, well? What do you mean, not always? And why would that be? Doing so makes it easy for the truth to fall by the wayside. Something serious like a trial shouldn't be treated like entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> See, Silver and Malouse? I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the traveler's response was most excellent. Mm -hmm. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malus. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Now, I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Wait, since when did we become assistants? Mm hmm? Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. What? Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. What are- girl. That's more like it. I think you're missing the point, Paimon! Far be it from me to brag, but I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Hmm. You have a point. <laughs> you're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. He's giving I rude. Have to add. Oh my god, oh, he's really giving oh, rude right, from Final it. Fantasy VII. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Linny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks! Sorry, but no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Uh, no, we're not leaving. We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case. Were you always guiding <gasps> the entrance? So cute! I can't. Yes, after the 
Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. What about during the show? I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time, I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I could not abandon my post, and I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. I love them. So, it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. Alright, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. Personally, I would love if they made these into plushies. That would be great. My Understood. Then I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my She's job. She's like, I'm literally just doing my job. Calm down. <laughs> You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and will be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Huh? Below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. That's me. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but... Huh. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. The back of the door isn't the same. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? Wait, does this mean there's another box inside this one? <laughs> exactly. Oh. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Oh, so there was a passageway under the magic box! Oh, and this passage linked the two boxes together. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate. I love that I was like, how did that, how did he do that? But, you know, obviously. So that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley. All while the outer box would remain on stage, as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. 
the audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Then what about your side of the trick? Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. I got you this box. And by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes and no one can tell who's who. What? Really? And that's my favorite part of this trick. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all works. Oh. Wow. Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last. I can tell a lot of thought was put into this. Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. We really don't know how that happened. If not for that interlude, this would have been an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime. So Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air, you know. Swirlies for that cutscene with the dress? Well, we've asked Oh, did they have the swirlies? The crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. It seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the opera house's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! It would seem so. Hmm. The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. She's just confident in, other words, in general. The charges are very likely As to she be should upheld be. unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. The Oratrice will too? That's right. This is how indemnitium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the Oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the Oratrice has its own will. It's AI! It's a judge in its own right. <laughs> This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Fascinating. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on button of a leg called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment, which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, 
Yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. Oh. That makes us persons related to the case. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Are they providing food? <laughs> of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid oh my God. to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. Now's not the time to be picky. <laughs> in that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Ooh. Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. <laughs> Paimon. Just kidding. Just kidding. Paimon will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? She can, uh, she can make some good snacks? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Um... Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle. Oh my god! The fancy strikes her. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. What? Why? <laughs> work you two then i'll get to it okay it tight oh my god i love every single character awesome soon from fontaine like everybody is just so extra must be in a blah, 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 blah. must be a spina de rosala thing i said that probably completely wrong ah, and Biman thought it smelled good while it was still in the she oven. made macarons girl But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself. Oh. Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything. Um, continue. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. <laughs> uh, that's not quite what Paimon meant, but okay. I, uh, Paimon was just thinking. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg weights, by the way. It's a real arm workout. It's true. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency. It's true. Or will crack. Anyway, give these a try. Because Fresh you don't want the, the egg whites to There's be... For each of us. You don't want, you basically want them to be like a firm peak for most baking. You don't want them to well, be eating too beaten. Eating might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? <laughs> Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. Thank you. Why don't you take a break as well? No yeah. need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? So, apart from the twins, we're left with two other people, the missing girl and the deceased. The flower 
face and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel. Every time I hear Halsey, I'm like the shattering of the vase, the, the singer? discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... There's no evidence that this third person even exists. <sighs> True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? But she had no way of knowing how the magic trick worked. Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the Magic Troops members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> now I want macarons so bad. After all. And I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Why not only carry three? Honest! Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Oh my god. Watch him be like 35. Know. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. It's fine. If you ate them, you ate them. Oh, it's fine. Everyone knows how much you love eating. <laughs> oh my god. This Wait. Is. Even you don't believe Paimon? Oh, how could you? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> All right, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Belus, set up the stove again if you would. Oh, she's gonna make what? some more. What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Oh, there's really no need to do that. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. You know what? Have the egg, sugar, and almonds. Okay, so she's like me. She likes cooking for people. She's like, it's no problem, as she goes into the kitchen and makes a bunch of stuff. Well, that's it for snack time. I get it. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. All right. <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Mm -hmm. Silver, Malus, it's time to go. I'll be back if I find anything new. Oh, I'm s I'm not 100% sure. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. I think he'd be I think he'd be saying. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Well now, don't you all look disappointed? Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. Oh my that god. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. She's just so... She's so chaotic. Just you wait. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. I love her Firstly, so much. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. 
In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Linney is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? Ooh! And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. What the heck? But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. How could Lenny not know about that sound? No, that's wrong. Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I Oh, I forgot, to change, I forgot to change the music, y'all. Look at those scales. Could those mean... Oh, they probably represent the AI's stance on the trial. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Heart? What the heck? The House of the Heart? What is happening? Oh, they're Fatui. Shut up. No wonder they did something like this. So the serial disappearances oh. were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. I've got a feeling that what oh, happened Oh no, stage she's using their backgrounds. Yikes. That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Oh my god. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. Oh! <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My, oh my, <laughs> do they look flabbergasted. <laughs> now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. <sighs> Good thing I made all those preparations. Oh my god! The all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. The all-nighter? Hey, Linny. Why didn't you tell us this before? The all-nighter? Oh my god, she is a detective. Order. Order. I wonder Mr. how Linny, often she does that with special interests. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the opera house, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? Oh my. <sighs> I know, I, I messed up. I was so excited to see it, but I messed up. I should have taken screenshots. Dang it. She's very silly. She's just very, she's very, very cute and very perfect and very, I love her. The split personality is very Junko too. I'm sorry, I have to say it. I'm not even, what, this schemes plus child is in the Fontaine. There must be some scheme org. I've been a victim of such schemes before and now. 
Please answer my question, Mr. Linney. I'm sorry. What? Yes, they're true, Your Honor. We are not doing I well. I told you that I was not qualified to well, be an attorney. That's it. <laughs> we might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? Permission to speak, Your Honor. <laughs> Granted. The my client was has withheld some key information. My defense cannot proceed. In that case, what is your request? I request a brief adjournment. There are things that must be discussed. Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Linney's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> I love her. How many times have I said that? But I love her. I really do. Big fan. Big, big, big. Well, big this fan. Is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. Yeah, sorry. Why didn't you tell me the truth? Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. Oh, we're we mad. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people. As many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. Still. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. But how can we know that this isn't just another lie? Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Explain the other issue first. Where did you actually go while the trick was being performed? Right. Yeah. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now. Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. And what did you find? Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. 
I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. But why do you want to understand how the or oratrice operates? Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from okay, you Okay, hopefully it's, it's it all truth. It was never my wish truth. to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. I believe in the facts. I will defend you from these charges. I believe that judgment will be dispensed as it should. Okay, um... Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. With my attorney the degree that I don't have. The scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. Mm -hmm. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're going to need a seriously watertight defense. Why watertight? Stop. No, not the pun. Actually, we already have the key evidence we need. Huh? The Germans must over. Let's go back. Okay. Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. <laughs> now then, if everyone would lend me their attention. At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linney's perspective. Paimon sure did, did it. That. Oh, wasn't it awesome? In other words, you believe that he knew nothing of the incident? That's right. Moreover, I believe my op my opposition's reasoning is flawed. Uh, my reasoning? The onstage equipment was clearly tampered with in a premeditated fashion. However, you say that Cowell bumped into Linny by chance. If that's the case, then if Cowell hadn't entered the tunnel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Assuming that what you say is true, Linny only needed to kidnap the young girl to cause a new disappearance case. What would the point of killing someone on stage be? Oh, they have a point. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, you tell them! And that's why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well... Your denial is very strident, I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Do you happen to remember how you refuted Linny's alibi initially? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't? <laughs> Your claim was, has now become my weapon. Your claim has now become a critical clue. That's right! Linny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel. That's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance. This means that when the crime happened, Linny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has now become the best how do you like that? How do you like that? <laughs> well played. <sighs> to think you'd use such <gasps> logic. <laughs> well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it? Her internal her internal dialogue is great. The murder was oh the murderer was. Wait, who was the only who was the only person who could possibly have committed the crime? What if it was... Kelsey is a missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or did she have her own scheme all along? What if it was Halsey? No. It was Cowell? 
The deceased's name is Cowl. Huh? Uh, that can't be right. Are you serious? is recreate the truth. What Cowell did, and how he went from would-be perpetrator to victim. The criminal must have understood the methods behind Lenny's trick, leaving aside how he died, Cowell had all the means to commit the crime at his disposal. The strange noise could likely have been the sound of Cowell and Halsey struggling. Lenny was not in the tunnel for one minute. This would have given him, given time for Cowell to bring Halsey. Oops. But according to the guard's testimony, no one entered or left the opera. Exiting from the box would have been in full view of the audience, pretty much guaranteeing that they would have been discovered. What's wrong, Traveler? Hmm. Are you still having trouble figuring things out? That's why I think that she changed. <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all because there were costumes. And here I thought you had something to show for it, but it seems you are still far from the truth. Look. Since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. And it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. Magic. Escaping from the water tank. Wait, could it have been the water? <laughs> Excuse my interruption, oh. dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the performance. Oh boy, the AI is getting mad. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Hold on a second. Objection. Not so fast. Uh, uh. Wait, that's wrong. <laughs> Lenny was not in Hold it. at that moment. <gasps> Paimon gets it! It all comes together if Halsey disappeared instead of being kidnapped! Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> oh, just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound. Madam. Moment. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. I request that we examine Cowl's personal effects. We might find something there. <laughs> Must we really? I should think that of anyone, your friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things. Even so, I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling wow. the trial. Wow. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards, 
Please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Callal. Uh, a guard returns with news. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post haste. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are. Oh! From the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea. The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. You've got to be kidding! People dissolving into water? Could something so ridiculous actually be true? Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy, but... Ooh. It's just a coincidence, isn't it? Huh. If people can become water, does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowell was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute. Could that mean... You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results, but we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all! Hmm. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. Ahem. <clears throat> it's Ace Detective! Objection! Plan. Cowell would tamper with the water tank rope and the number selector securing his target. When the magic box containing Halsey was lowered, the metal hook Ooh, look would at retract this art. gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial sea inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowell would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But he encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh. That does oh, make sense. that okay. That actually, links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. His eyelashes are so pretty. Like I feel like this nation. Oh dear. Oh. What do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? Oh. <gasps> what a humiliation. Now. It oh. seems like the only point of contention okay. remains. Okay. So exact she has some empathy. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case. And we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? A 
can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back. Okay, what is happening? <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Mm, I don't can't think of anything either. It doesn't look like there's any way around this. Uh, when in doubt, knock them out. The water as new evidence was too good a move. Oh, why did did she do that? Now? Because I thought she had. It seemed like she had empathy. I think we've all seen enough now, and we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale. Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move? <sighs> Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject. Miss, I must ask you not to <laughs> shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on. Don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick. One that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny. If you would be so kind. But what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. Voila. Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. What is happening? Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me, and then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate oh. us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cow. Did I not pick that? I it. But, what? Did I not? I picked Why? that. I literally picked that. Honestly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian, and I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket. So she so stole. I See, stole I knew. I knew this That's girl was I like. I just want to have a good time, I but I don't want to be involved. There. And I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. Oh! It, this is the... I didn't even recognize it was her! So you were the thief! Lenny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled! Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. 
There was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? Listen, I... I'm so mad because I guessed it was her. I was like, I bet it's, I bet it's her. And like, we don't know the reason yet, but I know it's probably not as obvious as like it seems. Like, I didn't think it was Cowl. If they're a practice hand at concealment, probably a professional thief could make it work. Yeah. But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Okay. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Yeah, now it's time to refute the Hydra Archon's previous reasoning. This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillian's perspective. She knew that she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So, she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days! Girl, what? She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. Talk about a sneaky thief. I mean, listen. I do that too. She was to hungry. Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! Now then, Lady Farina. Do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I... Uh, um... Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room <laughs> She's about before to the go. proceedings have concluded. What? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no. I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Look at that. She's like a deflated balloon now. She's going through it. If there are no objections. Then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. Welcome back, Kraz. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed. I want the donuts. Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, oh. Lillian was not from Fontaine, and thus fled the box with a loud noise. That's... Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillian. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, she said, I'm a and placed into the magic box. Ass. And thus I'm not from here. I'm from Mondstadt. Victim. Lillian, according to we don't do statements, things then like Fontaine. <laughs> the performance ended before hiding in other parts of the opera house. <sighs> As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny she did nothing wrong is in fact innocent. While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately. No, I think her stealing was completely valid. I just think they're I think the that Lillian did nothing to make wrong. The final decision. Not the south side of Mondstadt. Let's go AI. <laughs> I've never been so excited for AI to 
to give us to give us what we uh what we need. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> Victory for Ace Detective Kaima! Ace Detective, I Great can't work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Let's not celebrate just yet. Why not? Next. I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the Primordial Sea in Linny's baggage? Uh, right! Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know! Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. Coupon Town? I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity <laughs> to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets what is of coupon the water down? Have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher ups, yes. Therefore, you would be wise. Wait, to I'm trying to figure that out. And seek the protection of the guards. Never heard that in my life. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which, when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now, and have made decent more off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. The... <gasps> okay. He turned into water. Oh. And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. <sighs> I shouldn't have expected any less of them. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. Right, he's not going to Coupon Town. He's going to Death Town. He dead. He is liquefied. He is, he is hydration juice. He is for the poisson. So, we're just going back now? The problem seems to have been solved for now. We're not needed here anymore. That's true. Not the hydration. <laughs> Everyone, drink your bond. What are they going to do with his uniform? Winnie. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. Even after you learn that I'm a member of the Fatui. I just didn't wish to see anyone be falsely accused. I just wanted to be sure that they're, that we're square. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then, too. The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering, would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. Oh, they're, survive, that's right, they're adopted. I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from no, for a Lynette time. No, Lynette looks so sad. But I I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. 
So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? Riffra. That was how we felt at first. Too. As if I fate was on our side, we could that. say goodbye to those painful days. If only but they'd I look gradually closer. gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, she caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no, so he was gonna... <sighs> but wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care, and they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. Bilbo. Bilbo, can you believe this? That's messed up, Billy. Billy, are you providing therapy to everybody? Because that was messed up, Billy. I... I don't like that. That's terrible. I, that is absolutely disgusting. I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person. She hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards, I'm ready and to made beat my some way ass. In, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood. And the knave standing there in the darkness. So she'd already taken care of that guy. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm. Oh, good. And had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed. Betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. That's all in the past, though. The name is after the Gnosis, isn't she? Or she has her own plans. Oh, really? She has gained permission from the Saritza to first use the Gnosis' power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So, she believes in that prophecy too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. So, from small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. I'm sorry, but I still can't completely trust you. It's all right. I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I mean, isn't Arla Chin? Isn't that? My isn't own that friends? And that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I understand. I. Oh, it's Italian. Okay, thank you for correcting me. Hey there. What was with 
the disappearing act he pulled right as the trial ended. Were you looking for us, Navia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Well, I am sorry, Navia. Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? I was really only trying to defend Linny. I wasn't necessarily looking into serial disappearances cases. Besides, are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now, right? Huh. I see. Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine, after all. Oh, Billy! Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Uh, sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really need to get that, that formal? Uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, I'd just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way, there are no regrets later. <laughs> anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. Um, well, if you say so, let's go have that meal then. You don't have to twist my arm's arm. If Boss Navi is treating, can't play mine in. Oh, wonderful. In Navia, case, why don't we honestly, to the it is insulting to, to compare um, I believe we'll make it just in Navia time to for Taylor dinner. Swift. Navia is so much better. We did it! Holy crap! Y'all were right? That was a doozy of a quest. Holy crap. I mean, and to be fair, there was a lot going on. That was a fantastic introduction to the characters of Fontaine and just, just the world in general of this nation. Um, I think that was great.